Lunatic Asylum with my co-host, Lunatic Dad. What? What? Who is this Lunatic Dad you speak of? I don't know who this fucking character is. It's oh. you! Oh, me, yeah. Yes, I, you. I, that's me. I'm I'm Lunatic fucking Dad. Welcome I am my to the co host. Lunatic. I am a co host, but you are the main host. I'm just the co host. But together, we make the, the host. We make the host of Lunatic Asylum. Today, <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, what's, what's today's sub topic? Today's subject is how kids, step kids, specifically step kids, feel alienated from other kids. Kids and parents. Ah, now you you've hit a freaking nerve with lunatic dad. Oh baby, Is dad, a, a step kid. No, but I do know people who do, and I've seen things that are to me disturbing and oh. everything else. Now, mind you. Through my own personal experience, this is my personal experience in my life and in my families and everything else. Sometimes a stepchild will go ahead and feel exactly like that, a stepchild. They right. don't feel a part of the family. When there are certain events or certain doings or certain, uh, you know, things going on in the family and everything else, sometimes the parents and grandparents and everything else go ahead and push them off to the side because it's not their natural blood and everything else. Not saying that is the case all the time, because I want to reiterate that. I'm not saying this is the case all the time. But stepkids, in my eyes, are literally being, it's, it's a psychological abuse in my eyes because they want so bad to be accepted. Remember, not all stepkids come from a bad families that they came from and everything you don't know it could have been a death in the family it could have been a marriage when people both brought in children on each side of the fence and everything else but it, it if it's the case where people are uh remarrying a second time and they've already had kids on both sides of coming into the family unity and everything else now remember every time that uh, the mother may bring in some some of her own and the father may be bringing in some of his own and everything else you as it is your job and obligation if you're going to unite and, and and marry that is your job to go ahead and unite the family as one treat everybody equally but that's not what's happening out there that's not reality and everything else what dad feels should be and what is are two different do's and don'ts in far as treating stepchildren and everything else treat the stepchildren as your own and everything else but i do get it from a man's point of view is that we say hey that wasn't from my loin and everything else okay but so yes i will i will care for them i will help them and everything else but nine times out of ten the children that are from each side of the marriage for some reason both sides will go ahead and treat the the child's differently right. and everything else and that is wrong because basically if you're uniting as man and wife together as one to make the family a blended family is what it's called a blended family and everything if you're doing that and everything well then you've got to treat everybody the same because when you're marrying the significant other who was previous married on both sides and everything else are you then saying i'm going to treat you different from my first wife no, or I'm going to treat you different from my first husband. No, you've learned Unless hopefully from your damn mistake. Unless, Unless you've learned from your mistake. Hundred percent accurate. Hundred yeah. percent accurate. I am a stepchild on both sides, but I have a very good stepdad. I have an amazing stepdad, but because I have trauma past trauma and I had what abandonment issues it was very hard for me to understand that my stepdad did love me and does love me my stepdad is alive that he did and does love me because again what are you gonna do leave us what are you gonna do abandon me what when my mom passes away you're just gonna throw us to the dirt um, what were some of the other ones? You're not my dad. You can't tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. 
And yes, I had that attitude. But mm -hmm. it all comes from a stem of fear. But it also comes from, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Because my mom's dating an amazing man with amazing parents. Mm -hmm. But because of my own mental health, and I will say he is my stepdad because my mom and dad will never be married. My mom and stepdad will never be married. Um, that's how they choose to live. I'm 100% okay with that. They're okay with that. So let it be. Uh, but be, it took me 17 years mm. for me to realize that my stepdad did love me and does love mm -hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as my stepmom, I've never felt that, like, her kids were babied, and I was the babysitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you need to go clean your room. I just cleaned my room. You helped me clean my room. Well, you made it a mess before you went to work. No, I didn't, because we left and it was clean. You... I walked out the door with you right following behind me because I had to go get ready for work. Mm -hmm. Well, it's your fault you didn't lock your door. You see me lock the door. It's still mm -hmm. your fault. It was always my fault. Kid get hit in the head with a baseball because the other kid was playing with the baseball. My fault. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that that turned around and you were taking self-responsibility for somebody else's inability to go ahead and do what they should have done and everything else to right. be able to protect their family and everything else. I kind of go ahead and equate a lot of what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever knows about uh, not uh, Cinderella. Right. Okay. Cinderella was a stepchild. Yes. Okay. She was not her other sisters and look it kind of like i'm relating this is because cinderella had to do everything had to do the cooking had to do the cleaning had to do everything while the children the said children her sisters stepsisters and everything else didn't have to do nothing and everything else they put everything on her because they said you know you're coming into our family you're coming into our family so you should do everything so that yeah. you have to gain acceptance what happens with a lot of stepchildren is that they they want to gain that acceptance and everything else and it's not necessarily from the parents no it's from their other siblings and everything else right. they they are just looking for that acceptance they're looking something to bond to and everything else because again how you became a stepchild uh, in a uh, relationship and everything else has many different avenues. And I would love to hear anybody say uh, down in the comments and everything else, if you are a stepchild or whatever the case may be, what type of things did you experience, good or bad, because there's a lot of fucking good out there too and everything, good or bad, that you wish could have been different or basically stayed the same, that you can give some advice to other stepchildren and everything else, because it's not always in a negative. We want to bring out the positive light of also being a stepchild. Because like I said, it could have been from an abusive relationship. It could have been a death. That is the worst one to go ahead in my eyes to have to deal with is if the father died or something right. or the mother died and it wasn't through a divorce. It wasn't through anything. And they got along beautiful. They were a match made in heaven and everything else. And then a mother or another guy or whatever comes into the equation years later. And now he becomes the stepfather or whatever the case may be. He may not be able to know how to deal with when it comes to mournful and how to be able to understand and everything. The resentment of the stepchild to him. The stepchild might. Now, again, that's something I cannot talk on through any experience or whatever. So put it down in the chat if you've ever uh, been a stepchild that is through a death and everything else. And the person who died was someone that you looked up to big time, that you loved so much and everything, but they passed on and everything else. And then another man came into your your mom's world. How did that start out in the beginning? I mean, I'm very interested 
to hear people's opinions on this and everything else. Because remember, you're dealing with grief, sorrow, and everything, and I don't want to make light of this. And I everything. do want to bring into that that most children who are in a good family, but for some reason mommy and daddy separated and they never thought it would happen, they are dealing with that grief and that sorrow. It's just a different type of grief because now it's, I still have my daddy here or my mommy here, but why did they leave the family? Why couldn't we be enough? And a matter of fact, I know, um, not to call anybody out, but mm -hmm. Alex, the one that, you know, I adopted as my own kid, he, his mom remarried and had more children from another man and he has brought up a couple of times why wasn't I enough why weren't we enough I came from abusive you know it wasn't so much abuse towards me because again I was the baby to my dad but I was it was a my dad would abuse my mom and my dad would abuse my sister so they say me being the baby and my dad not really abusing me as much as everybody else. And I'm not saying my dad was complete abusive. My dad, there was good times, but there was also bad times. Um, that when I would look at Greg and be like, why do you love my sister more than me? Because my sister lived with him. My brother lived with him. Why do you love them more than me? Why couldn't I live with you? Or which my stepdad didn't want kids, but mm -hmm. he knew that my mom had kids. Mm -hmm. And he had to get into the role of being a step parent and mm -hmm. really loving each and every one of us and finding out who we were. And once again, I was going through the turmoil of why the fuck are they splitting them now? Because mom and dad both split up many times. It was in and out, in and out, in and out. And mm -hmm. they thought that it was best to be together for the kids when in reality it wasn't. But, um, so, are you going to abuse me? Are you going to leave me? Are you going to hate me? Mm -hmm. So he had to, he had to learn how to deal with all of that trauma that I held in and took out on both of my step parents. And the step parents sometimes get misunderstood or mistreated that automatically the child, again, when you're bringing in and you're blending a family and everything, the from a man's point of view, it, it's hard to go ahead and understand that, hey, I'm now a father. And if the person never had no kids, no nothing, and he marries a woman, that has a bunch of kids or whatever, you got to understand, there's a reason why he has no kids up until that date and everything because else. Because he didn't want kids. He didn't. Possibly. Po that could possibly. be one of the reasons. Or he just didn't find the right woman that he wanted to go ahead and right. have children with and everything else. Oh. But when you're, when you're bringing in some multiple different families on the, each end of the spectrum coming in, that's where it gets very, very dicey. But, again... Strong advice I would give to anybody that's thinking about marrying somebody with kids and everything else. Make sure your house is clean in order as far as uh, the woman you're with or the man you're with. Make sure it's true love because, remember, true love also will go ahead and accept no matter what. And will try to go ahead and do everything in their power. See... What ends up happening sometimes with stepchildren and everything else is that sometimes it can also pull the family apart and everything else. Because, again, you don't know how they became separated from their first ones and everything else. Like I said, God forbid, it's a death and everything else. It You can't blame the children who lost their father or their mother when they see their father or their mother with another person right. and everything else. That, a to therapy. me, what I don't therapy. know. Do family well, therapy and bring the partner into the family therapy so the child has a safe place to express their expressions. 
And yeah, that, that's one way. Sure, th sure. That's going to be the best idea. Um, no. Or, or you turn around and do, a, if you're in a, a marriage like that and everything else, and you're bringing in kids on both ends of the sides and everything else, also go ahead and, you know, as a father, if that was the case, I would treat the same the both way and everything else. Right. You fuck up, you fuck up. I'm not going to go at one one, I'm going to turn around and be just give a little tap on that. And it's okay, Johnny. And the other one, I'm sitting there screaming to high heaven to my wife and everything else. Why did they do that? Where the hell? You know, that's I shouldn't have to put up with this shit and everything else. And you over dramatize it and you over uh, discipline and everything else. But the same exact scenario happens with your own. Now you got a problem. You have exactly. to come into the mindset is I'm going to treat tit for tat on both ends of it. I could only stress this over and over again, you know, when it comes to stepchildren and everything else. If you truly love the person you're with, you are an acceptance and loving of everything that comes with that person. And you should give the same time, time and sympathy and being able to go ahead and listen. You've got to be able to have the art of listening and then everything else. Good but communication that, skills is what you need. Yeah, and that does not happen a lot out there. Now, but like I said, I don't want to bash on, you know, people that listen to this and everything else thinking that Lunatic Dad is saying that stepchildren, that, you know, that you boo-hoo, you get all this bad slack and everything else. Because there's a lot of people out there that are stepchildren that will say, my stepdad is my father. The other one is just a sperm donor to me. That's right. all he I, ever was. I was going to bring that one in is there, now there are parents that are bad parents, but their step parents are amazing. Yeah. And at that point in time, they're going to hone in more on to truly loving them. Um, mm -hmm. And <coughs> that alone, when you're dealing with somebody who truly loves you, you there's going to be great communication skills and they're going to work on building your trust up inch by inch. They know things are going to slip back. They're not going to rage. They're not, but they're going to communicate with you. And that's the most important thing. Um, mm, mm, mm. I'll <laughs> take into example, mm -hmm. Roy and Jordan. Is Roy and I married? No, that is my partner in crime. Okay. But any day of the week, that is Jordan's dad. He's been in Jordan's life since... Jordan was three years old, two and a half, three years old. That's that. That's, That's that. daddy. Mm -hmm. You you mess with Roy, you're messing with Jordan, and you mess with Jordan, you're messing with Roy. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, if Jordan were to be like, hey, Dad, I really need 50 cents so I can get a bottle of water at school because, you know, they don't have fountains. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, okay, look, let's get you the money you need. Does Roy have discipline yes does mm -hmm. roy make you make jordan do chores fuck yes mm -hmm. but he also wants to instill a hard day's work makes a great pay and we've lost that in society but their communication skills <laughs> you heard it on my video they joke around all the time mm-hmm they mm -hmm. talk about everything. Well, I'm back here doing a live stream or talking to you guys. They're up there talking. They're up mm -hmm. there playing video games on the phone together or mm -hmm. on the Xbox. They're doing things together. Mm -hmm. And never it once do you ever hear Roy say, no, I'm not watching the kid. It's go to the store, go to Chicago. Do you want to take Jordan with? I think you should take Jordan with. Mm -hmm. Y, X, Y, Z. Yep. But yep. That's daddy. And if you were to bring in any other man in Jordan's world right now or ever, he will straight up look at you and be like, you ain't my fucking dad. Exactly. And now that gets back to the point of, uh, a man coming into another child's life that the child has only known his life to be one. And now 
you're trying to go ahead and get into the family because you married his mom or whatever the case may be. Now that's where it becomes dicey. You have to you have to go ahead and be very careful how you tread water on this is because again, you don't know the circumstance why they separated. And God forbid it was through any type of physical abuse, mental abuse, or whatever. If it was just downright, just it was not meant to be, and they should have separated a long time ago and everything else. Sometimes stepchildren feel, I am the cause of why mom and dad got a divorce. I did something. It's my yep. presence and everything else. And that that's very dangerous because of all the teen suicide and all this other stuff to where they're like, look, I, we were a family. We were together and everything else. And messed and up it, by me. And it was messed up by me and everything else. And at the end of the day, it had nothing to do with you whatsoever. It's just that two people were not compatible with each other and everything else. And they should never even went ahead and let it get that far. But I say, if you already know that you have a problem in, in your relationship before you even have any kids or whatever the case may be, and it's and you're always constantly fighting everything else, thinking that a child or whatever can go ahead a and make the relationship better and everything else, you are making a bad mistake because you're already basically premeditating that there's going to be a step parent out there in the future. It's going to happen and everything else. I mean, if you already got that serious stuff going on, don't bring a child to think that it's going to go ahead and fix your relationship. But also on the flip end, you have to understand by being a step parent and everything else, you take on the obligation. It is your obligation and what you should do when you go ahead and put a ring on that female and everything else or the male or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. The point I'm trying to get is, is when you are in acceptance of bringing the families together on both sides and everything else, you better damn well make sure that first off, that that is the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with and everything else, because it gets tricky. If there's a mag imagine the kids that have to go through three, four, different stepfathers or stepmothers and everything else how fucked up you're putting their minds and everything else that one minute the guy might have been abusive next guy might have been an alcoholic the next guy might have you know beat the hell out of out of the woman and everything else and she's just looking for some love and someone to just care for her and take care of her and everything else but every guy she ever gets involved with and everything else turns out to be a fucking animal and everything. What do you think the ramifications of that child having to go ahead and say, I had four different stepdads and everything else. That child is really going to have major issues when they try to go ahead and have a relationship themselves right. and everything else. It's going to be very hard. You're basically screwing the own child's mind because they, the only thing they've ever seen is multiple men with the, with the mom. Right. And I understand if things happen in a relationship where you end up like my... <laughs> My daughter was one that went through four different boyfriends, five different boyfriends with me. Okay. Two husbands, five different boyfriends. And again, my daughter is fucked up. I did fuck my daughter up by doing that. I was young, dumb. Literally, I had my daughter at 15. Um, but my dad always made the man promise that no matter what, at the end of the day, they would always be part of my child's life. I could call my ex fiance up right here right now and say, hey, I don't have the money. Jordan needs a new pair of shoes. Can I get it? I would get it. Dwayne, until the day he passed away, may his soul rest in peace, was always a father to, the, to her. He would come get her. He would take her for the weekends. And that is what a stepdad was. Mm -hmm. um, Brian, we're not going to talk about because he's an asshole and abusive. But going from those three, when I got with Roy, she really didn't want nothing to do with him because of the simple fact that, oh, you're just going to be here for a couple years and then mom's going to get mm -hmm. bored of you. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. mean nothing to me. Um, it's been 12 years now. Mm -hmm. 
He's still in my life. He's still in these. Shows what would you stuff. say? What What would you say over all that period of time to be with Roy and everything else? Has her mindset and everything else changed to where she's like, "Hey, this is different." It has to a point because my daughter okay. still reverts to it was me and you against the world, mom. Mm -hmm. Now there's somebody else in our world. We do you had think, to defend Jordan. Now I don't have to do that as much, and it's hard on her. Do you and think by, by do you not think by you being such a young mom and everything else that not only she may be she looks at you as a mom, but she may also be looking at you as her best friend, as she a does. friend. She now does. that this is where I draw the line in in my world. We are not friends. I tell that to my children all the time. We are not friends. I am your father. I she don't knows want I'm to be her looked mother. at. No, I, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you, that. You, the, the, you, you see the way me and my daughter communicate. Mm -hmm, we don't mm -hmm. communicate like most parents, but that's just like me and my son don't communicate. When my son does something wrong or my daughter does something wrong, all hell breaks loose. But at the end of the day, they know they can come talk to me. The only reason why I'm saying that is because when you have a young woman having children at such a young age, when that child also gets older and everything else, sometimes the, it gets more to a friend type. Okay, I'm going to do what you say and, and everything else. Then once they start getting older, they're like, wait a minute, we're only X amount of years apart and everything else. What makes you feel you know more about this than I do and everything? That's what I'm saying is, I mean, that's a subject for another day as far oh, as people yeah. who are very young, having children and everything else. What what things in which you guys have to go through and everything else. It's not easy, and I'm glad I'm not in that circumstance and everything else by the grace of God. But, you know, but, but as at we the were, end of the day, going back to the subject where three four partners sometimes it's that very last partner that really hones in and again Roy didn't have a kid when we got together his first child was with me um may our baby rest in peace uh but for sure for sure she she's like why do I get punished for something that, you know, I've done all my life? And it's like, Shani, you're not getting punished for doing something you've done all your life. Um, we're trying to teach you right and wrong. Or, Jordan, you, you've been doing this whole, your whole life and we keep telling you, let's not do this and you keep doing this. Why do you keep doing this? And yes, we both lose our temper, Roy and I do. That's parenting, though. That's parenting. That's parenting. But you at know. the end of the day, we also believe in communication because, and I'll say this over and over and over again, if you can have communication with your partner, you can have communication with your children. Now, and that there but, are children like Kyle that do not listen. Sometimes. And Jordan. There's children that are do not listen all the time and you have to. But you got to also allow them to fail. You have to right. allow them to fail. You have to and, allow and them see, to fail. And see, see, yeah, because you got to see the consequences. But that's another subject in the matter. Let's get back on task here. Now, when... when when it with the stepchildren and everything else, remember they did not ask for any of this. No, they, they didn't, didn't ask for none of it. As far as they're concerned, mom will always be mom. If she's worth a grain of salt, the children will go wherever that mom tells them to go and everything yep. else. But mom also has to make right choices who she gets involved with too and everything else, and always at all costs protect the the children and everything. Because remember. You are bringing your children to to the to the kids. They're strangers to your child and everything else. And it's more or less that you're you're bringing them to somebody that hey, all right, this is the person I'm in love with and everything else. Do not as as you're doing that. Don't force your kids to say I love you. 
to right. the stepchild. Let them, let them the do it. Let them do it on their own. Naturally. And let them feel it. But a lot of times, that's where sometimes you get some stumbling blocks. Hey, you know, I never hear uh, little Jimmy go ahead and ever say, I love you or anything. Because little Jimmy might have been scarred, might have been already, and, and, and is scared to let his emotions out because he's like, look, I had mom and dad. I love my dad so much, but I love my mom so much. Now they're separate. And word to the wise, people are involved in a marriage and everything else. Word to the fucking wise. Read my lips. Don't put each other down in front of the children. Don't do it. The biggest 44 years here, people. 44 fucking years and everything else. And I never put my wife down not one time in front of my children. But. The point being, the point being is your children are only going to be what you make them out to be as they're coming up. Because when they're a baby and everything, all their traits and all their thoughts and everything else is coming from you guys. You guys are the ones that are building that mind and thought process and everything else. And if you fail them children, then shame on you. You've done something wrong because you didn't bother to go ahead and think, hey, maybe we should keep, take the shit behind closed doors or whatever the case right. may be. I mean, easier said than done. Easier said than done, though. I don't think my daughter's really ever heard an argument between Roy and I because normally we don't argue in front of the kids. And that's the whole thing. I mean, there have been times where we've snapped off on each other. But then both of us walk away and we're like, you know what? We just need. Five minutes. Five minutes. And then we come back and reiterate it. But at the same point in time, uh, you teach your kids how to communicate with their partners. Mm-hmm. 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 And if you're, if you're going to have a loving, absolute gorgeous relationship with your child, you should have that same relationship with your significant others. Will significant others argue? Yes. Do you have to do it in front of your children? Hell no. I will honestly say this, and whoever gets to this part of the video, you truly are a lunatic froggy, lunatic dad fan. If you ever get to this part of this video. If I told you, lunatic froggy, that me and not mama have never argued about each other, each other, not kids, just each other, not one time in 44 years, would you believe me? Yes. You know why? Because you guys accept each other for who you are. You, you have. You guys are an amazing duo. But the point being, now have we argued about the kids? Yes. Oh yes, because we had different <laughs> mentalities on the way certain things should be done and everything else. Sometimes she's right. Sometimes I'm right, or whatever. And then we come to some type of an agreement. Okay, this is how we're gonna handle right. this and, and I everything was, else. I was gonna air, uh, really hone in on that part. Thank you for bringing it up. That... That's gonna be a that's gonna be an interview with you and Mama and everything. And she's gonna be willing to uh, uh, fuck. Sorry, people. I'm kind of getting over a sickness. Uh, but she is she's willing to have those type of because that's type that's her powerhouse. Right, and I love everybody. having my sa Sunday morning chats with Baba. Uh, but, again, when you get with somebody, make sure you communicate how you want your child to be disciplined. Up front. Up, Up front. front. Yep. Discuss yep. it. Work in between the mediums. Now, you got to remember, Roy is 17 years older than I am. But he looks good, though. He kind of makes me... I get hot flashes when I see him. Just saying. All right, never mind. Roy is 17 years older than me, so he's old school. You don't do it my way? It's the fucking highway. I'm not like that because my dad used to say the same shit to me. It's my way or the fucking highway. You do what I want. This is my house, my rules. Mm -hmm. I'm you more did, of the... Did, didn't I'm, give the child a voice. Right, an opinion. and I'm mm -hmm. more of the... I want to hear what you want to say. I need to know what you're thinking at this point in time. I want that conversation with my children. Why? Because I can learn a lot more about the situation at hand mm -hmm. than I can any other way. And then I will punish them. 
and, and you it know, has taken me years to get this far, okay? It has mm -hmm. taken me parenting lessons. It has taken me growing up mentally. It has taken me healing spiritually and mentally to get to the point where I'm like, I want to know what you're thinking. And with that being said, there is also one thing we haven't touched on, and we're going to touch on it fucking right now. How shall we do this? How about when you got a blended family, okay, and on each side of the family, the families start treating the children differently. They start treating anybody that say, 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 lunatic dad and lunatic mom. Okay, say we were with other people and everything else had children and whatever. And the other family would go ahead and treat my kids totally different. But they would all, we'd all come over together as a complete one unit and everything else. And they're all going up to the one set of children, giving them a hug. How you doing? Oh, I love you and everything else. And then the other children, they put out their hand and shake their hand or whatever. No, that at that point in time, you fucking, at that point in time, you stop that shit, you get your kids, you fucking back the fuck away, and you tell them until you can learn every, <clears throat> learn to love each and every single one of my children, and it's not her children, it's my children. Mm -hmm. Until yes. you can put that Action. fucking boundary down, and that's where a lot of people don't. You're going to take one child, you're going to take them all. Now, exactly. my mom has taken both of my children. My ch my youngest has lots of disabilities. Hi, pups. <laughs> hey, he's into the conversation, too, he, now. He, he, he's he, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to hear this. All right. Uh, but if you're going to take one child, you're going to take both children because we're not pay playing this favoritism bullshit because that will come up. That will scar your child. They will feel undeveloped. They will feel unloved. And you are allowing it. You are allowing somebody to emotionally abuse your child when you say, you can take, it's fine, you can take my children. You don't have to take hers. No, bitch, if you're a blended family, you fucking take them all. I don't care. Because I, a blended I family is a fucking family nonetheless. It doesn't matter who mommy and daddy is. It matters the fact that these children are young and they're going to learn that they're not lovable because you don't want to fucking say, oh, hi, baby, how are you doing? Oh, I fucking love you. Fucking, it's a child. You should love a fucking child no matter what. Don't fucking sit here and play favoritism. Fuck that favoritism bullshit. I could not have said that any fucking better myself. Jeez. Uh, now you understand why she's lunatic froggy? Just saying? Just. No, I, I, I was the child that always felt unloved. I was loved. My parents treated me equally. But Bob did more with Sissy because Sissy lived with Bob. I lived with Dad. But Dad did more with me. Dad gave me $200 a week allowance. Dad didn't give sissy $200 a week allowance. Dad didn't give brother $200 a week allowance. But Froggy got the $200. Mom put my sister into modeling. So they went and did all this stuff. They learned their makeup. They learned how to do hair. They learned how to dress pretty. I didn't. I was raised by a fucking trash man. Yes, but again... That is separate outside of the realm. They were related. I'm talking about but when it's, it's still, all together as one. It still made the favoritism pop into my head. Mom only loved Candace and DJ. Mom didn't love me. Now mm. you bring in another family, more kids on top of that, where, again, you're not feeling loved. You're not feeling valued because you're not there. You think mom and dad don't love you. That fucks with your brain for years. And you're going to allow a significant other's family to do that to your kids? The fucking mental torment that you're putting your kids through is psychological abuse. Exactly. Say you got an aunt and stuff that when all the kids are coming over to visit and everything else and that aunt only gives to the 
one set of children, but not the other one and everything else. That, to me, be very careful uh, when you're going to bring children together, when you bring it to the both sides of the family and everything else. That is the obligation of the parents, first off, to set that shit straight immediately. You, It is your job to go ahead and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, if you're going to give to Andy, you better give it to fucking Luke Unless and everything it's else. Unless it's a birthday. Unless it's a birthday. No, I, I, well, if it's for that certain occasion, yeah. If right. it's a birthday, you do not give Andy because Luke got a present. You do not give Luke because Andy got a present. That shit is fucking bullshit. And I that agree. shit needs to stop too. If it's their birthday, unless they are fucking twins. You do not give to another person on that said birthday or holiday. Well, if they're fucking twins, that'll be a fucking miracle considering they would be stepbrothers or sisters. I'd be like, how in the hell did that happen? My mom and my de- my Uncle Jim on her like, side, her brother, are born three years apart on the same day. That's pretty fucking amazing. I mean, that is. That is. So, but. at that point... Yes, you can fucking give both presents, but stop the fucking favoritism. All you're doing is psychologically abusing these children. And it doesn't matter if you're fucking auntie. It doesn't matter if you're grandma. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's one kid with, or one family with four different kids, four different father kids, and you decide to only take fucking Jimmy John over here and leave Timmy over here Timmy and Darla and Nancy over here you are psychologically abusing the fucking children you don't take I agree I I I I I, I could not agree with that any more than what you just said any more than what you said because people have to understand again dad and Froggy have said over and over again, these kids have not been asked to be brought into this world, okay? And again, when you're going to do a blended family, when you're going to do a blended family, word to the wise, talk with your significant others about this and everything else. Feel set it out. and boundaries. You've got to set the boundaries and everything else. No doubt about it, because like I said, in the long haul, in the long haul, by setting the boundaries, then neither one of you can look at each other. Well, you didn't tell me that. We didn't say that. No, common sense should kick in. Common sense should fucking kick in. It shouldn't even have to be said, but I would strongly advise if you're in a second marriage or whatever, talk about it and everything else. And don't feel uh, that to uh, your spouse, hey, that really hurt me or whatever. This, you know, this, this was not right, what your family did and everything else. That was completely wrong and everything in order for a blended family to work means you you make them from a blended family to one family. And if you got the mentality as a husband and a wife when you're combining families as we are one, just like when you say, I do at the altar or wherever you get married, you're coming in as one. So treat the children the same way. Treat your wife like they fucking deserve it. And don't let your mother step all over your wife either. Do you know how many people are out there fucking bashing your wife? And I'm not even going to say your wife. Your significant other. If your parents, aunts, uncles, whatever, your family is sitting there and degrading your wife for bullshit reasons, stand up to them. Do not. Let them abuse your wife or you can go out the door with your mommy. That was what we call a drop mic fucking moment. Holy shit. Damn, I think I touched a nerve with Lunatic Froggy right now. I I believe I did. But I see so many families that Oh, I think you could do better. I think you could do better. Mm -hmm. I got a girl at church. She really loves you. I think we could, you could do better than your significant other. Yeah, mom, whatever. Nah, no fucking yeah, mom, whatever. That shit is straight 
No, Mom. That's my wife. I love her. You want to act like this? You can get the fuck out the door and not come back until you learn how to treat my wife with respect. Exactly. Exactly. W without a shadow of a doubt. Again, you have you have to protect you have to protect your significant other, and the families have to go ahead and understand. If your families tell you how to raise your children or the stepchildren and treat them differently. And they do that, and you do nothing about it, and don't say nothing. You're a piece of shit. Then you're just as at fault because you did not go ahead and stand up for what you got into and everything right. else. Like I said, stepchildren, they do get the brunt of, in my eyes, they get a raw deal and everything else. But That's again, the same. I'll beat you like a redheaded stepchild. Stepchild, true true and there there is there is a uh, saying like that but i will also say i'm sure that there hopefully that you guys get to this part of the video makes sure you put down in there if you are a stepchild tell us how you've been treated maybe it's something good maybe something positive i would love to hear positiveness and everything else but there is the dark side to being a stepchild but but there's also a lot of bright side too you know Exactly. Not, not all step parents are the evil ones. Oh, I better not say evil ones, Chef. I didn't mean that, Amy. I didn't mean that, Amy. Not Just all evil people. Step parents are assholes. How about that? Exactly. Exactly. And I'll straight I, out say it. I don't, exactly. I have one of the best, amazing stepdads I could ask for. Do you know how many years it took me to believe that? Quite a bit. 16 years. It took me 16 years to realize he loved me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't be a Tanya. Appreciate the ones that love you. And speak up against the ones that are assholes. And if the Amen. family don't fucking treat you like they're your, your theirs, then they can go out the fucking window because they don't deserve you. You are fucking amazing for who you are. Never let anybody doubt, make you doubt that. I, wow, wow. I mean, I think I put a damn firecracker underneath your <laughs> ass right now, people. As dad is just kicking back and really enjoying this and everything else. I mean, give I, a thumbs up, please. Please I give a damn see thumbs so up. So many people hurting on the inside because of a parent's choice or a grandparent's or an auntie's. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. At the end of the day, why would you, if you're not going to do that to your children, why would you allow somebody else to do that to your children? Mm -hmm. Exactly. They were not asked to be brought into this world. They were, That was decided by a woman and a man to decide to bring that child into this world. That child did not ask it. Sometimes but since the test tubes, Dad. Sometimes mm -hmm. test tubes. Well... Yes, but predominantly, I'm just, there I go again. I'm just thinking the old ways. Sometimes, you know. They did not ask to be brought into this earth. So treat your children like the tiny humans they are. They have feelings, they have emotions, and they have ways of expressing them. Understand those children. Even if those children have something wrong with them and they're non-vocal, They'll still tell you what the fuck they want. And that is another subject. That is another subject. About I'm going to say this real quick, Dad. Oh, okay. okay. If your child has a disability and this other family, whatever other family, any family around you, whether it be a step family or your own, does not appreciate that fucking child like the rest of them, they need out the fucking door too. And with that being said, uh, yeah, I really <laughs> don't have anything to cover after this. Uh, wow. Wow. Lunatic, Lunatic Froggy, that was amazing. And wow, that's all I got, people. Uh, make sure you subscribe really to Lunatic Froggy vibes on this okay uh, yes i i see this and like i said give it it's just do people because that is pure fucking emotion 
I got nothing to say. Thank you. Emotional issues. But we love you all. We love our amazing co host, Lunatic Dad. You can find him at Lunatic Dad on YouTube, Lunatic Dad on Twitter, and Lunatic Dad on D, D Street? D Live. D Live. <laughs> you can find me, Lunatic Froggy, on TikTok, Twitter, and here. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. And 